Hello everyone. The, the rule of thumb for the fall garden, at least in my area, is always to start your seeds for the fall garden on the hottest day in August. The problem with the hottest day in August is that for us it started like in June. We've been above the 90s every day for two months at least. So it's the end of August. I'm always late doing this, but I think it's going to stay really hot late. So now's the time for me to be starting some more of my fall seeds. <coughs> I want to start some individual Chinese cabbage and I want to start some loose leaf lettuce. And this is a normal way we do this. Is you set out your little pots. Maybe you use the jiffy pots, maybe you use individual pots, whatever. You're going to set something like this up and this is like 9, 18, 27, 36. Between these two I can do 72 plants. It takes up almost an entire four foot shelf underneath here just to see if the seeds germinate. The deal is, is what if there's an easier way? When we were at the Mother Earth News Festival in Asheville back in the spring, this lady from the gardener's workshop showed things, these, this little contraption called a soil blocker. Now the soil blocker is what she uses to start seeds, but its claim to fame is this. All of this space, just to germinate some seeds, collapses down to, if I don't knock it over, twenty little blocks, little, I don't know, one inch squares, Here's another one. Just put a plastic thing on top of it. This is red sail lettuce. This is Tom Thumb lettuce. Now, look how much space all of this took. I actually could have fit a second one in here by turning it sideways like this. So, there's 20, 40, there's 60 starts, which is the same as these four and one of these that much space is started in this very tiny little space. Now, once these reach this size, it's time to transplant them over to here. But, I've only used this much space to start these seedlings. That's what's so incredible. So, these now, instead of all this stuff being used to start individual new seeds, all of this area will be used to transplant these. Now, how does this soil block thing work? I'm going to make a little room here and I'll show you how we do it. Now, the items you need to make one of these soil blocks is you need this little gadget. This is the little soil block maker. It's uh, less than $30. You can get it from that catalog. Uh, you can find them on eBay. You can find them on Amazon. It makes 20 little squares. As you can see you've got the little, there's how you push them out, makes the little holes for the seed. The deal is you plant one seed in each little little square. So, you want a very, very fine seed starting mix. You need to be as fine as it can be because you've got to compress it into those little squares. You're going to place it, you can buy these things, but this is what mushrooms come in. It's a little tray you get sliced mushrooms in. So, you've taken this container and you've got some real fine seed starting mix. Everybody says add some green sand. Uh, it looks like green sand. It's a mild fertilizer. Then I want to add something that's a uh, pretty much a basic everything kind of fertilizer. Whatever you have that's real fine. I'm going to add some of that. Now, to try and imitate this, you know, who cares? There's a lot of people on YouTube who are fanatics about these soil blockers. And they'll give you all kinds of recipes. I use a real fine seed mix, a little bit of generic fertilizer, and they all consistently say you want the green sand, I think, to help with the rooting. So I always add the green sand. So you mix this up. 
Now, what's going to be different with this over your normal seed starting mix is that you want this to be a whole lot wetter than you would normal start, normally start seeds because you've got to make this gluey stuff that you can pack into that seed starter. So we're going to add a good bit of water and then we're going to start working it. And rather than you watch me do this, we'll just stop the recording and we'll come back when I get it all mixed up. Okay, we've worked this a couple of minutes and added some more water and this kind of really brings back your childhood mud pie days because you want this to be really quite wet. Get rid of the water here. As you can see, it's uh, you could definitely squeeze water out of it if you wanted to. Now, at this stage, what you're going to do is take this thing and smash it in. You want to pack it as much as you can as you want to get all that soil compacted into little, those little one inch squares. And you can see water squeezing out, so it's wet. So, neat thing is, is if you mess it up, just dump it in and do it again. And let's see how this one looks. So, we're going to pull this out. We're going to move it over here. And we're going to squeeze. There we go. It actually worked. I've got 20 nice little squares. Each one has a little dimple. Now, we're going to open up our seed. And some people pour it out, use a toothpick, end of a pen, I don't know. You just want to go real careful. And you want to put one seed in each square. So, I'm going to do one. I guess it's no terrible crime if you do two seeds, but you're only sprouting these in an inch. So, two seeds, if they both sprout, it's going to be a pain. What I particularly like about this method is that there's always seeds that don't sprout. And I really dislike using, having this much space consumed by something that only half of them sprout. What a waste of space. So, while those other ones get transplanted into here, the next round only takes up this little bit of space. The aquarium people could sit this on top of an aquarium for light. Have it working pretty good. My racks hold three, but it's very easy to have a little section there to put these in. Cabbage is a bigger, nicer seed for old eyeballs to work with. We'll do ten of the lettuce, ten of the cabbages. Then you'll want to take some kind of little plastic container, little top, and put on top of this. So you want to put a little, plas little um, plastic container on top to hold the humidity in. And every morning, check it. It is small. Check it. Make sure if you need to water it some, go right ahead and water it. But that's how quickly you can start. 20 seedlings in a space basically the size of a, a deck of cards makes it very easy to do your garden rotating things in and out because you finally have room to get them started now we're still in the high 90s every day and the high 70s in the morning which is way too hot to get these things to live outside so I'll have nice healthy plants inside when it finally cools down enough. So these are called a soil blocker and looks like this. They're made in England. 
because those people make all these little weird things and it's really quite a contraption. It may be the best tip I got out of out of the two or three days we were up in Asheville because it has I did tomatoes, peppers, everything got started in these soil blockers this year and it was much much better getting things started. So as you could see I had the little ones ready to transplant and these are some older ones that were also started in the soil blocker this is all bok choy and as you can see we've been picking it dogs eat it we eat it love bok choy that's your cabbage that's in your uh, Chinese things bok choy is a wonderful vegetable uh, as soon as it cools down these will be ready to go outside so when I pull my tomatoes and peppers out my fall garden will be like instant presto because I'm gonna have plants this big to go straight out plus those others will be ready to go straight out so my fall garden will be off to a great start even though the temperatures are staying really high late so that's how you can get things started soil blockers I really like them uh, for more in-depth and different kinds of recipes for how to mix up the, the soil uh, look for other people on YouTube there's a bunch of them just do a search on soil blocker. So that's how to start the fall garden here at the Ramsey household. Thank you for watching.